Notice we have two links between these switches. Without spanning tree, a loop will be formed and will cause problems. So one last thing I want to do, and I suggest you always do this, is enable spanning tree. All you need to do is type STP enable, and as you can see, spanning tree is enabled on this device. I'm not sure why, but on HP switches, the default is to have spanning tree disabled. On Cisco devices, the default is spanning tree is enabled. And to me, that's a lot more logical. So, as a rule of thumb, I will always enable spanning tree as one of the first things that I do, unless there's a specific reason not to. The issue is, once again, that if I plugged in all the cables, as per our network diagram, there are a lot of loops. So as an example, notice here, that's a loop. There are other loops in this topology. Without spanning tree, we could bring down the entire network. So as a rule of thumb, on your switches, enable spanning tree. Here's our second HP 5800 series switch. You can see I've logged in via the AUX port, in other words, the console. I can type the command display saved configuration and as you can see, there's no saved configuration on the switch. Display current shows me the current configuration. You can see once again that this is using Comware 5.20. It's got the default system name of HP. What I'd like to point out here is notice on interface VLAN 1, the switch is using DHCP. So once again, this is another networking consistency. To be consistent, vendors tend to be inconsistent. On some A-series switches, DHCP is not enabled by default. DHCP is not enabled on routers by default. But as you can see on this switch, DHCP is enabled by default. In other words, if I had a DHCP server, the switch would have automatically been allocated an IP address. In my example, however, I want to set a static IP address. So I'm going to type interface VLAN 1 IP address. And in this case, 10.1.1.102 slash 24. In other words, we want to configure VLAN 1 with the IP address as per our diagram. While we're here, let's change the system name to core underscore 2. Let's enable spanning tree. As you can see, spanning tree is now enabled. And let's set up Telnet. So Telnet server enable to enable Telnet. Let's create a local user of admin service type Telnet password cipher HP. And then don't forget to do the authorization attribute, giving the user the correct privilege level. In this case, I'm going to give the user privilege level three. User interface VTY04. Authentication mode is going to be scheme. Protocol inbound Telnet. User privilege level is going to be three. So that's the configuration of our 5800 series switch, in other words, core two. Display saved configuration. As you can see, we now have a static IP address on the VLAN one interface. Spanning tree has been enabled. We've also got a user account with the name admin. So I've completed the configuration of core two and core one. The last step is to change the IP addresses on the router in the previous lab, I configured the router with an IP address of 192.168.1.1. So let's change the IP addresses on the router as per the diagram. And then I can cable up the devices and we can configure VLANs and complete the configuration. So here I'm connected to the console of the router. I'm going to hit enter, put the password in which we configured, which was HP. I'm going to go to system view. Display current. 
They're the usernames that we previously configured. There's the loopback IP address we configured and the IP address on gigabit ethernet zero slash zero. So first thing, let's change the name to router. I'm gonna go on to interface gigabit zero slash zero and give it an IP address of 10.0.0.100. And I'll put the mask in this way, just to show you that you can. So once again, display this, shows me the IP address on the gigabit zero zero interface, which is the IP address that we have in our diagram. On gigabit zero one, we need to give the device an IP address of 10.1.1.100. So interface gigabit zero one, IP address 10. 1.1.100 and in this example I'm just going to use this format so display this shows me the IP address on the gigabit 01 interface let's save the configuration yes we want to overwrite the startup configuration so the router is validating the configuration and it's been saved so we've now configured the router and the switches with an IP address and we've enabled Telnet. I'm gonna take the equipment, rack mount it, and then Telnet directly to the equipment via my Cisco router. So I've rack mounted the equipment and now my rooms are a lot quieter. So let's see if we can Telnet to the router from my recording machine, which is connected to the Cisco router this connection is actually using wireless. So I'm wirelessly connecting via the Cisco router to the HP network. So Telnet 10.0.0.100. As you can see, I'm prompted for a username, which in this case is admin. Password is HP. As you can see, I'm connected to the HP router. Display interface brief shows me that gigabit 00 is up up. In other words, the physical interface or link is up and the protocol or layer two is up. The IP address is 10.0.0.100. The same is true for gigabit 01. The loopback is also up with an IP address of quadruple one and the switch module interfaces are down because no cable is connected to those interfaces. Can I ping? The switches. So can I ping 10.1.1.101? And as you can see, I am able to ping core one. What about core two? Ping succeeds. So I'm able to ping the switches from our router. Can we use LLDP to see the cabling? So display LLDP, neighbor information. Now this is not gonna work because LLDP needs to be enabled first, but notice the router tells me that when I hit enter. So, LLDP enable. Let's do the command again. Display LLDP, neighbor information, shows me neighbor information. So there's the command, display LLDP, neighbor information. The router is connected using gigabit 01 to the switch on gigabit 1023, which is correct as per our diagram. Notice gigabit 01 is connected to port 23 on the switch. I didn't put the full interface numbers here to make it easier to read the diagram. You can see the IP address of the switch is 10.1.1.101. Scrolling down, I can also see other information, such as the VLAN number, which is VLAN 1 and various other information, including that this is an HP 5824G switch. So, the router once again is able to ping switch one as well as switch two. Can my PC ping those devices? So on my local PC, will I be able to ping 10.1.101? The PC is connected to the Cisco router in this case using wireless. The Cisco router is connected to the MSR. Notice the PC that I'm using, the Cisco router and the MSR 
all have an IP address in the network 10.0.0.0. So I'm able to connect to the router, but will I be able to ping the switch? Notice the ping fails. The reason why is that the PC and the switches are in different VLANs separated by a router. I need to make sure that my PC's default gateway is set to the MSR and I need to make sure that the switch's default gateway is set to the MSR. And the MSR will do the routing between the two subnets.